Hi, this is Dave Brichetti. Today we will make a simple calculator using a dictionary to look up functions for the operations. And uh, let me run it here. And you see it takes expressions like 23 times 10 or 5 minus 6 and it uh, shows the results. So uh, let's get started writing this program. And uh, the first thing I want to do is make a function that'll add two numbers. And so here it is. And we can call it just by saying add four and three. And uh, we can print the result of that. And when we run this, we get seven. So we call the add function, we give it a four and the three. The add function adds those two numbers and returns the result. Great, let's make one more for multiply. And we use the asterisk in uh, many programming languages to mean multiplication. Uh, and let's just change this to multiply. We'll run now and four times three is 12. Great. So I've shown you that you can call functions and give them values, uh, give them uh, um, arguments. These are called arguments. Um, now, this is something that may be new to many of you. You can create a variable called, for example, uh, operation. And to that variable, you can assign a function. So here, I have assigned the function add to op. So when we say op here, it's just as if we'd said add. Let me run it and, uh, and you'll see. So that adds four and three. Now, if I want to multiply, I change this to mult, and it works as before. So you can think of op as pointing to mult or pointing to add. Uh, now, why would we want to do this? Well, maybe we want to be able to type in expressions from the keyboard and use the plus sign or the asterisk to find the right function to call to do the work. So let's talk about how we could create a dictionary with these functions. So let's create a dictionary called uh, operations. And you remember that to create a dictionary, one of the ways is you uh, use open and close braces or curly braces. And you use uh, keys and values. And so this is a key and this is a value. And here is another key and here's another value. So Oppers is a dictionary containing two elements. The first element has a key of plus and a value of add. And add is that function up above on line one. The second element has a key of asterisk and a value of malt. So what can we do with this? We can look things up in this dictionary. We can look up these functions. So um, we could say something like oppers, and then we put something in square brackets. Remember, that's how you look up something in a dictionary. And if we put a plus inside the square brackets here, then we will look up in the dictionary for the value of the element with the key plus. And that should return the function that will do the add for us. So this will return that function. Now you see the parentheses here. Parentheses, one of the meanings of parentheses is to call a function. So we're going to call this function and we're going to give it the four and the three. Let's run and see if I've done this right and see if we can find the plus add function through the dictionary. Here we go. Good, that worked. Now if I change this to an asterisk, we should look up in the dictionary and find the mult function and it should multiply these numbers. And it did, here's your 12. Okay, good. Now the next thing I wanna do is be able to enter these expressions uh, from, uh, from the console. So what I'll do is I'll say um, expression gets input and then a prompt here. This is just a symbol that I'll use that means uh, type something here. And um, so first this expression is just going to contain an operator. 
Let me run this, then I'll explain more. Program runs. It pauses, waiting for me to type something. I'm going to type either a plus or an asterisk. So I'll type a plus. And what should happen is that the plus sign that I typed in is used to go look up the add function from the dictionary. And it appears that worked. Once it finds the add function, then it calls the add function and gives it 4 and 3. Let me run again and try with the asterisk. And that works too. Excellent. Um, now, just to make it easier to run this, I'm going to make a loop and say while true just to keep, keep this going. So this will go over and over again. Type an asterisk, type a plus, and I could keep doing this all day. Uh, I don't have a way for it to quit, so if I hit enter, it's just going to fail. This is an error, and we'll deal with this uh, momentarily. Okay, so let's deal with the case where we want to end this loop. And we could do it like this. If the expression is given, if something was given, then do the work, else break. And break will cause this while to quit. So we have a way to terminate the loop by just not typing anything. Let's run and see if I have this right. So I'll type something, and now I'll hit enter, and there's no error message, and the program stops. I can tell it stopped because this uh, got dim. Okay, the next step is to allow typing the expression containing the three pieces, the first number, the operator, and the second number. And to do that, I'm going to use split a split function on string. So let me show you how this works. If you take a string like this, 1 plus 2, and there's spaces in here, and you split on the spaces, then what you get back is a list of three strings. And what we can do is we can take these three strings and we can assign them to three different variables. So let's do that here. We'll say operand1, comma, operator, comma, operand2, equal sign, expr dot split, a space. So that'll split the expression on spaces. There'll be three pieces, and those three pieces will be assigned to these three separate variables. Now we're going to use the operator to look up the function and then we're going to call that function with the operand so operand 1 and operand 2 and these will these are strings and so we want to treat them as numbers and we're going to assume that these are integers and so let's convert these to integers let's run this And now we should be able to type something like 100 plus 100. And there's 200. Or 10 times 5, it gets 50. Great. All right, we're almost done. But we need to deal with the case where we type in something completely invalid, like um, just this. So that causes a a certain type of error called a value error. Um, we could run again. We could type something that is right except the operator is something that we don't know. And that'll give a different error, a key error. Uh, so we want to handle all different types of errors. Um, so let's do this. We'll use a try. except and what this will do is catch any error and display an error message let's try it so I'll do the last thing I did um, something like it anyway sorry I couldn't make sense of that and it continues, so I can go on. I can try something else. 1 plus 1, that's good. 
2 times 3, um, x times 3. Sorry, I couldn't make sense of that. Great. Uh, so let's review. We've created some functions. We've created a dictionary with symbols that are used as operators associated with these functions. And we've created a loop that goes until a break. And we prompt for the input expression. And if one is provided, then we will now, uh, dealing with any errors that might occur with the try and accept, split the expression by the spaces, which will give us three pieces. And we'll use that middle piece, the operator, to go look up the dictionary in the dictionary for the function. And then we'll call that function using the operands after we convert them from strings into numbers. So what you could do as an exercise is add additional functions for different operations. That's all.